Shalom, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Pulse of Israel here in our eternal and, uh, and, and ancestral homeland. I don't know why I had trouble getting that word out today. Yes, our eternal and ancestral homeland. Today, we have a special guest that we love having on the show in order to get insight into the goings on of Israeli politics, because there's always Israeli politics and another election. So we're going to be talking to Jeremy Sultan, Knesset insider, political strategist, and number 16 on the Amina list. That is the party headed by Naftali Bennett. So uh, before we get started, you all know censorship is on the rise in social media and it affects us as well. So the best way to continue receiving videos made by me and my organization is to go to pulseofisrael.com and to sign up there for our newsletter. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. So let us bring on Jeremy Sultan. Shalom, shalom, Jeremy. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, Avi? Thank God, home, healthy, trying to keep sane in this insane world. How are you? How's you and your family? Hi, uh, everyone's good. You know, uh, we've still all been lucky. None of us, uh, none of us have had Corona yet. Uh, I'm pretty lucky. I haven't even had a Corona test yet. So that's great. Stay, <laughs> stay healthy. Lucky. Yeah, we also, we haven't had Corona or Corona test yet. Yeah, it's true. I haven't even thought about that. But um, all right, so let's let's get into Israeli politics. What is going on with the elections? How are you reading the map right now according to, and again, for people who don't know, there are plenty of, uh, of, of polls out there. You've always had your finger like on like the mega, the mega poll, putting it all together, the mega data, looking through the big picture of all the polls. So what, what are you seeing based on your information? Well, uh, pretty much if, if things continue the way that they are right now, um, the end result of this fourth government, you know, this fourth election will be no government and, and a fifth election. Wow. <laughs> I mean, um, that's that's really what we have. We have a situation in which Really, everyone is ruling out sitting with everyone, pretty much, with the exception of my party, of course. But yeah, you have uh, the you, you have uh, Lieberman who won't sit with the Haredi, who won't sit with Smotrich, who won't sit with uh, with Labor, who won't sit with um, uh, Likud, who won't sit with Meretz, who won't sit with uh, uh, whoever else you got there. Pr pr pretty much, you have a situation where no one wants to sit with anyone. And uh, look, there's a reason why we, we're having our fourth election less than two years, and that's because Israel's very much divided. And, and whatever poll you look at, whatever trend you want to look, it, it's the same answer, and that is that we're just <laughs> very much divided, and it's not very conclusive in terms of uh, the results that we're looking at. Well, the interesting thing is, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, the, the right-wing religious bloc, as it's called, with all of its satellite parties, meaning people who were associated with that camp, which, I mean, some people include uh, um, Avigdor Lieberman even partly being a right-winger in some shape or form, Gidon Sars party, uh, Yamina party, even according to all the polls, that's around 75, 80 seats, but yet we're still in this, pro in this problem. Um, so how, how do you explain that to people? Oh, it's it's a very simple example, uh, and and that's um, you, you know Benjamin Netanyahu. As you said, in, in most polls, it's over eighty, and some of them it's it's close to ninety seats even wow. of what's considered the right left block. This is no longer a situation of right versus left. That's the traditional way that we've gone about politics um, for, for decades here in Israel, in which you had two blocks, you had a right block and a left block, but today the left block is pretty much disintegrated. Um, right now, blue and white, merits, labor, uh, the Ram party, these are all uh, Zalika. All these parties are either just above the threshold or they're, they're under, depending on what the poll is. Really, Yeshatid is the only party on the center left that is safe when it comes to the threshold. And uh, even then, they, they haven't had one poll getting them up to that 20 seat number. They've always been in the teens and every single poll that's uh, been taken out. And uh, even when Lapid is uh, campaigning, he's not really expecting to get more than his best showing, which was 19 that he got back in 2013. On the other side, like you said, um, the, the right is divided into, into groups. You have uh, Shas and UTJ who, who support Netanyahu. 
You have the Smotrich, Otsma, Noam list that joined for an alliance and, and they're backing Netanyahu. And then you have Gidon Sar's party, which said they'll go with anyone but Netanyahu. You have Lieberman's list, who's again right wing, but uh, said he will not go with uh, any, uh, he won't go with Netanyahu, go with anyone else. And then you have also Yamina, led by Naftali Bennett, uh, my party, that says they, they will not make a commitment in terms of uh, what would happen in a future situation, which, of course, Naftali's running for prime minister, but what would happen in a situation where he doesn't get enough recommendations in the prime minister's house, uh, sorry, in the president's house for prime minister, uh, what that would mean. So, so you have a situation where, uh, despite the right having a very, very large majority, um, really, you know, uh, we're talking about two thirds majority, close to even three quarters, uh, be because of the resistance and opposition to Netanyahu, uh, the right cannot cannot form a government. That's just the way that the situation stands right now. That's crazy. You know, I want I just want to go into a little more detail of what you're referring to, so people can get more of an understanding. Um, let's go into the differences strategically, not, not not yet differences in parties. We'll talk more about your party and party positioning afterwards. But strategically for the elections, both Naftali Bennett and Gidon Saar, both part of the traditional right wing. I mean, Gidon Saar was part of the Likud in just a few months ago. Um, they both basically position themselves. We want to replace Benjamin Netanyahu as prime minister, going with that strategy. Each one initially, when they started with that strategy, polls giving both lots of seats, even up into the 20s, over time, the numbers for both have gone down to the, the lower double digits of, of, of teens. I think uh, 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 Yamina now is around 10 to 13. Uh, Sarah is around 13, something like that. But yet there's still a major difference between the two strategies. Sarah's basically went in the direction, anybody but Bibi, whereas be, as Bennett and your party is saying, listen, we want Bennett to be the prime minister, but we're not, we're not puzzling out, we're not negating anybody, maybe even BB. Which do you think is uh, strategically playing out better for which party? Well, I think it's important to understand the, the fundamentals in terms of how we choose prime minister. And I think um, really that sort of explains the difference in approach between the two parties. Um, for those who don't know, we have a three-phase process. And I think I've been on your show talking about this in the past, yeah. but, but in the first phase, what you do is you have the legislative branch election, right? You're, you're voting for your congressman, you're voting for your uh, district, you're voting for your constituency, you know, depending if you're from the UK or Canada or, or wherever, that, that's, that's who it is that you're voting for at this time. And based on the results of the legislative branch, all of the parties that are elected to the Knesset then uh, send a delegation to the president's residence the president is sort of like our Queen of England, in which he's a head of state without a lot of uh, real power. But this is the main thing that he does in terms of power. And, and he gets the recommendations from the various parties that, that um, got into the Knesset, and they recommend a prime minister uh, candidate. And then in the, third, uh, in, in the third vote, so of course, in the first vote, it's all citizens. In the second vote, it's the parties themselves that, that give their nominations. And then in the third and final phase, it's each one of the 120 elected Knesset members where they have to vote a measure of uh, confidence. There's a confidence vote on the, the new government that's between the second and third phase, all the coalition agreements and the horse trading that everyone's used to. So right in the 